Hey folks, it's time for Frugal Prepper. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna show you how you wire up a generator interconnect to your house. Here's my main meter coming in. This is my main feed coming down to the fuse box. Then last night I put this in. Uh, this is a L6 uh, or L1430P uh, connection. Uh, a plug made, you plug the extension cord from the generator in there. Got a little light that lights up when the generator has power and i ran a piece of 10 gauge from this into the house and i put it close to my breaker box so that i didn't have to buy too much uh, cord um, so that worked out so i only had to get a six foot chunk of cord so now i'll take you inside and show you how we're going to wire this into the panel okay so in here i've already taken off the cover to the panel i've gone ahead and put in this is my wire coming from the generator interconnect here. All right, it's from the generator plug outside. It's coming in to the fuse box. There's this little doohickey here. Okay, so um, that's where I'm at. So <clears throat> what I have now is this is my main service disconnect in this box. This box is an older 1980s QO. A load center and it has this one main breaker across the top that goes this way now you may have the kind that has a big breaker up here and you'll have to get a different style of interconnect for those but they make all different styles this is actually a cheap one uh, but some of them cost like a hundred two hundred dollars so what will happen here is this little this little doohickey will go here and this will stop it so that you can't have the utility power on at the same time as the generator power. But what I have is a full box full of breakers. Um, I know that this 20 amp goes to the computer room where they used to have a, my, my in-laws had a big cha lift chair for my uh, grandfather-in-law. And now it's just the computers on that 20 amp dedicated circuit. Um, and then I also know I'll have to look, but one of these is a dedicated 20 amp for the air conditioner in the living room where it used to be a window air unit stuck through the side of the wall. That's no longer there. It only has a lamp and an alarm clock on it. So on the QO load center, as you can see, it's been done here before. You can tap up to two wires into a breaker. But you can't do this on all load centers but the QO is UL listed for that. So my goal is to take whichever one the air conditioning is and move that down and double tap it onto this one with the bedroom. That'll free me up one breaker spot. Okay, so now I still need to free up another breaker spot. Um, and for that, I've got this. These are like unicorns to find. So for the older QO load center. Let me get it out here. Um, but uh, they're as rare as hen's teeth, I'm telling you. Because uh, <laughs> the new ones, the newer load centers are QOT and they have a hook on them right here. So without that hook, um, or with that hook, it won't fit in this box because this is an older QO only load center. So it's just got the metal and the metal, right? And the only one that actually makes any contact with anything is this one. This one's just here to hold the breaker in. So this will do two 15 amp circuits on one breaker. You can't double tap them, but you can put two wires in. So I'm gonna take a couple of these 15 amps and put them on one. And then I will have space right here to put in a 30 amp breaker to power my generator. This is like $14 for this 30 amp breaker. This baby, 65 bucks. <laughs> uh, because they still make them, but they're really hard to find because I, I think a lot of people have upgraded and these aren't as popular of a breaker box anymore. And the new ones have a hook and a big plastic thing. Mm -hmm. And it goes for the CTL, which is Circuit Something Limited. So you can only plug in so many of these throughout the box in certain places. Um, because the, the idea is they don't want people just, I guess, putting bunches of them in and overloading the box. But you're still going to blow the 100 amp breaker, but I, I don't know. Um, so anyway, 
we're just gonna put the one piggy back in here. We're gonna move the 120 amp down and then I'm gonna strip these wires out. The hook goes into a 30 amp breaker right here in this spot. And then we'll put this on and that will make it so that only one can flip at a time. All right, so now I removed two of these breakers. I actually took the one up here, it was a 20 amp dedicated for the furnace, which it has a switch with a 10 amp fuse in it, so I don't think it's ever gonna draw 20. And I tapped that one into two, four, six, eight, twelve. This one right here. You can see there's two wires coming off of it now. And so that one's tapped in down there. And we are set. <laughs> I'm hoping that that's tapped in right. Yeah, it's under the little thing. Okay. Yeah. So that basically allowed me to remove these three breakers and install this breaker, which is the piggyback. And now I've got room for my generator interconnect breaker. I also got my ground wire and my neutral hooked up. I just had to kind of tap them in there with some others. There's just not a lot of room for neutrals up there. <laughs> They didn't give you as much room in these old boxes for grounds and neutrals as they do in the new ones. But um, that's okay. It's it's there. I don't have to replace this whole electric service is the main thing. Like tearing this all out and rehooking it all up. So it, it might seem like a simple, straightforward process, but it takes hours. It's it's a lot of work. So um, we're set. So now I'm just gonna strip these two wires off hook them into a breaker, plug that breaker in there, put my interconnect in, and I'm set. All right, so now I've got my wires hooked up to this breaker. Just the, the red and the black go here. The white and the ground go up here. And now we just gotta plug her in. Make sure she's off before you plug her in there. I'm probably gonna need two hands for this. Oh, come on. There we go. All right. There. So now that's all plugged in. And so now we're ready to put our little generator interconnect in. And so this piece just hooks around the breaker above, like so. And then you take a small screwdriver and you bend that in. And then this will stay here. And you wanna make sure that your thing is out. I'm gonna need two hands to do it, but basically make sure this is out and then bend that in. Okay, this is installed now. So now in order to turn this one on, this one has to be off and vice versa. And that's on there pretty good and strong. So now we're ready to put the cover back on the box. So here she is with the cover back on her. Um, you see how that interlock works now? So in order to turn that generator breaker on, you gotta turn the main breaker off. And then it's labeled utility supply and generator supply on the breakers. So, that is how you do it. That's how you legally can put one in. Like I said, they make different ones that slide up and around and stuff for the main breakers that are on top of some of these panels. This is just the generator interconnect for this style of panel, which happens to be one of the less expensive ones, which is good. But you know, I'm out 60 bucks for the plug. Um, the wire was like $20. <laughs> uh, this breaker was $12, this breaker was $60, this generator interconnect was $30. So it, it still gets kind of expensive, but do your electric this way. Don't build suicide plugs and plug them into your house, or your dryer outlet, that kind of stuff. Because if you screw up, uh, you can back feed the 240 volts out from your house back to the transformer that used to step the 8,000 or 16,000 volts down to 240. Now it's stepping it up. Now alignment's out there fixing that line. He gets shocked with 10,000 volts of electricity. So spend a little money, do it right. 
blind men everywhere will thank you. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you later. Says Tom, your frugal prepper. All right, folks. So this was the generator I was planning to use. Uh, this one has a few issues. Number one is it only has a three prong uh, 240 plug on it, but that's okay. The ground and the neutrals bonded in that generator head. So my plan was to pull that apart, drill a hole, tap a wire in there, and run an L630 plug right here. But by the time I considered like the $50 in parts to do that, Plus, this generator has a manual governor on it, so it, when it hits a load, it really sags down and then comes back and like, wah, 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 and it's really loud. It just has this one little muffler on it. <laughs> it's really loud. Um, so what my plan is is just to put this together, get it working, and sell it for a couple hundred dollars. Um, I mean, it'll work fine running power tools or something, but. Trying to run a whole house on 20 amps just isn't quite cutting it. And by the time I would get the exhaust modified to quiet it down, I'm going to have more money in it. So I went over to Harbor Freight and um, I got something. <laughs> um, this was on their clearance rack. Um, so this is normally like a $780 generator. They had it on the clearance for $524.99. Um, it doesn't have any oil in it, so I don't think it's ever tried to be started. Nobody ever hooked up the battery on it. There's some wiring hanging down here that looks like it's not supposed to be. But I think the main thing they discovered was that this was dented in a little bit, and I think they just brought it back. And they brought it back without the battery. So I'll take this off and straighten it. Check the wiring. Um, here's the other thing for the battery. And so I bought this. And I'm going to try to get it working. I have five days to take it back if it doesn't work. Um, and I went ahead and bought uh, this. Which is the heavy duty wheel kit for it. That's like 50 bucks. But it was only it was only like 34 for the light duty. I figure I'll get the heavy duty for it. And then I got uh, I got this, which is just a 25 foot generator cord. Uh, I have a hundred foot one ordered on Amazon. It was like 180 dollars because I thought you know I'm gonna have to run that all the way back here to the garage and have it running back here to keep the noise down. But now that this is quieter, I think I can deal with a 25 foot and just plug it in right out there. Um, then I'm gonna sink a four by four post into the ground and uh, put a chain through it so that I can lock the generator up when it's sitting out there. Nobody can come and take it. Um, but now it's time to get this unloaded. It weighs as much as three men and a baby. I have my wife and son come out here and help me unload it. Then we'll sit it down here and put the wheel kit on it and see if we can make it work. All right, she was bone dry. All these wires look normal. They just like they got pulled down. So I tucked those back up. They all look connected. Here's the connections for the battery. This didn't come with a battery, but I got a little motorcycle battery I'm gonna throw on there. It's not sealed, but it'll work. <laughs> It says use sealed lead acid battery only. I don't have a sealed one. But uh, I got this kind of hammered back out and got all the, the vent holes opened up on it for the most part. I think it's uh, it's fine. Everything under here looks perfectly fine. Um, didn't do any damage or anything under there. So I think uh, put this back on and we'll fire it up and see if she runs. This is for my friend War was on a lot <laughs> YouTube channel. We disagree on many things, but he's a good guy. <laughs> and uh, this oh, is a battery that comes with the acid separate. So they still do sell batteries with the acid separate that you add into the battery. Um, most places have them pre-filled. 
Um, but the stuff they sell less of, they don't pre-fill. But I know you said you couldn't do that anymore in Australia, and you're asking, can you still do it in the United States? And the answer is yes. They do not consider you a terrorist for buying a battery with separate acid. Because if you were a terrorist and you needed the acid, you just go buy a battery and dump the acid out of it, right? <laughs> All right, I'm going to get this battery filled up, strap it down over here and hook it up, and we'll see if we can get this thing started up. All right, folks, I'm, I'm running on generator. Uh, the fluorescent lights are just a little bit flickerier. But other than that, everything's normal. And only certain ones, like the, the ones with the electronic ballast are fine. But I'm out here running. Everything, every circuit's turned on. I'm running the fridge, the freezer, the central air, everything except for the dryer outlet. Which that generator would have enough to run the dryer, but I have to turn some other stuff off, most likely. Because you could probably run the dryer on low heat, though, without turning other stuff off. But pulling that full 50, 500 watt element would be a little much. But we're planning on getting a gas dryer, so. But yeah, here's the central air, it's running. Pumping up the hot air just fine. So I put about two gallons of gas in that thing. I'm gonna see if it'll run for a couple hours here. And uh, see if it keeps running everything just fine. Everything seems to be running. Hi, kitten. I did it again. Meow. Yep, the fridge is actually running too. Yep. Then we got the freezer. Run. Alright. So we got everything going except for the dryer outlet. All right, folks, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Um, I've run the microwave. That's a, uh, like a big 13, 1400 watt microwave. It's like, it's like, draws some current. I couldn't even run that on my little generator by itself. This generator didn't seem to notice. <laughs> it just turned it on and everything kept working. So we've got fans on, we've turned on a bunch of lights. Uh, we've, we've checked everything, everything's working fine. It's been about an hour here so far, and we're running on generator. I'm pretty happy. I'm going to let it keep running for a little bit, and just, I really want to put it through its paces while I have five days to return it if something goes wrong, so. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see how long that gas holds out, too. I don't know. That two gallons of gas barely moved the fuel gauge on that thing, so I have a feeling it uses some, some gas. <laughs> but we'll see. All right, I'll talk to y'all later. It's Tom, your frugal prepper.